I've been using the Nikon D3500 for the past week. In this video, I wanna share with you some of the pictures I've taken with this camera, and I wanna give you my personal opinion on whether the Nikon D3500 is a camera worth buying. Hi, Paul here from Photogenius. Now on this channel, I do photography tutorials, I share tips and occasional reviews like this one. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Now, this video is not gonna be an overly technical review of the Nikon D3500, but what I can promise you is this will be an honest, hands-on review of this camera from somebody that uses cameras every day and teaches photography for a living. So over the past week, in between my photography courses and workshops here in Brisbane, I've been taking photos with the Nikon D3500. I've taken photos in good light. I've taken some photos on cloudy days, indoors, at night time, and I even got up early to take a sunrise photo. Now in this video, what I wanna be doing is sharing some of these images with you, giving you my thoughts on how the camera performed, but also I wanna give you some tips on the camera settings that I used. This is the D3500, Nikon's latest entry-level camera aimed at the first-time DSLR user. This camera replaces the very successful Nikon D3400. Now, on paper, this camera looks to be very similar to the one it's replacing. The same sensor, the same processor, same ISO range, autofocus and an LCD, exactly the same. But there are some improvements. The camera is smaller, lighter and the battery performance is much better than with the D3400. But the biggest change with this camera is in the design and layout and the grip. Now compared to other Nikon cameras I've used in the past, at first I did find the new grip a little bit uncomfortable and probably suits smaller hands much better. But a big plus is the camera did feel really secure in the hand and this is almost certainly intentional because Nikon have redesigned the layout of this camera. All the key buttons are now placed to the right of the LCD screen. Nikon claims that this makes it easier to change the settings using just one hand. And with the new redesigned grip, they're right. Now the layout and the design of the camera I really, really like, but there are, however, two things that are missing from this camera that did feature in the D3400 before it. But we're gonna come back to those later in the video. So day one with this camera, one of the first photos I take is a picture of a lady coming up some escalators. This photo was taken at the Gallery of Modern Art here in Brisbane, a location that I love to visit. I often take my photography students there as it offers some great photo opportunities. Now after taking this photo, I imported the image into my iPhone, did a quick edit using Snapseed and posted it to Instagram. So I've been shooting JPEG and RAW images simultaneously in the camera, which is just as well, because when I imported my images into Lightroom, I found that although I could see the uh, JPEG images, Lightroom did not recognize the RAW images out of this camera. I also checked with Photoshop, same thing. I checked Photoshop and Lightroom for updates, none were available. So that basically means that at the time of recording this video, Lightroom and Photoshop do not recognize raw files out of the Nikon D3500. Now this is not an issue. An update will be released very, very soon. And this is quite usual with brand new cameras. So this basically means that every image you're gonna see in this video is the original JPEG straight out of camera. But I've also thrown in a few edits as well. My next trip out with the Nikon D3500 was to a place called Wellington Point, a very popular Bayside destination. On this particular day, it was a bit cloudy and overcast, but the light I thought was quite nice. Uh, there's a nice jetty there, which is a popular um, subject for photographers. So what I did is I got myself a nice composition, got a nice low angle, um, had some rocks in the foreground just to add some interest. And here's the original JPEG image. Remember, this is straight out of the camera. Now I've also included here, an edited version. And once again, remember, this is not an edit of the raw image. This is an edit of the JPEG done in Lightroom. I'm pretty happy with the picture. Now I've created a page on the Photo Genius website that features this and some of the other images that I've taken so far with the Nikon D3500. On this page, you will be easily able to swipe backwards and forwards between the original image and the edited image so you can compare the two. Plus, I've also listed all the camera settings that I used for each individual image. You'll find a link to the page below the video. 
Wellington Point is a very popular spot for people that like to fish and as a result you get a lot of seagulls hanging around looking for cast offs. Now I thought I'd take advantage of this as a way of testing how the Nikon handled a moving subject. So first thing I did was I selected the shutter priority mode on the top of the camera. I then changed the focus mode to AFC. This is a great focus mode when you're shooting things that are moving. So I've been testing the camera this week using the standard 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens that comes with the camera. A telephoto lens that would get me much closer to the seagulls would have been ideal, but I didn't have one to test. Now, despite that, I was actually pretty impressed with the photos. The camera handled the focusing in particular very, very well. Now, whilst the pictures may not be perfect, considering the lens I was using, they're pretty good. And of course, hopefully soon, I'll be able to edit the raw images. I'm really looking forward to seeing how they turn out. Now, after I'd finished with the seagulls, I started to head back to my car and spotted a dog walking company taking some of their clients for a swim in the bay. I grabbed a couple of quick photos, here they are, and uh, I got talking to them when they came out of the water and they kindly agreed to a portrait shot. Now, taking photos of people set against a bright background like the sky can be a real problem. But once again, I was actually quite impressed with the way the Nikon handled the exposure. Now the lady in the middle was handling two very dark colored dogs, so they were a little bit underexposed. But look, I got home, popped the JPEG image into Lightroom, increased the shadows a little bit, reduced the highlights a little bit, and here's the edited image. I'm pretty happy with it. Now don't forget, if you're interested in knowing the camera settings for these images, you can see this image plus others that I've shot with the D3500 on the Photo Genius website. You can see the original images, the edited images, and see all the camera settings. Interested? Check out the link below the video. Feeling inspired by my seagull photos the previous day, the next thing I wanted to do was see how the camera handled fast movement. I wanted to use the fast shutter speeds and also test out the camera's continuous shooting mode. Now the Nikon D3500 can shoot a burst of five frames per second. This is great for shooting sports and fast moving subjects. To turn this mode on, all you need to do is press the release mode button on the back of the camera and select continuous. So I needed a subject to test this out and I offered my daughter $5 to be my subject. What I wanted to do was pour water on her head and capture the motion of the water as it sprays off her head, try and capture all the water droplets. I thought this would be a pretty cool photo. So I locked in the fastest shutter speed I could on the D3500, which is one four thousandth of a second, adjusted my aperture and ISO accordingly, and off we set. Now here's where the camera struggled a little bit. When holding the button down, the camera comfortably took a burst of five photos, but then started to really slow down. Now this is not unusual, this is called buffering. Remember, when you're taking a photo, the camera creates a lot of information, processes it, and then saves it to the card. Well, the camera was creating so much information and trying to write it to the card that it had to slow down. It's called buffering, it's not an issue, and it's partly to do with the card inside the camera. Now I use SanDisk uh, SD cards and inside the camera at the moment is the Ultra 2, which is a great card. It's very reliable, but it's not the quickest. If I pop this memory card out and pop in a SanDisk Xtreme Pro, this card is much quicker. So the camera can write uh, more information to it. Here you'll see the frame rate will improve. It still slows down but it's much, much quicker. So remember this, if you like taking photos of things that move quickly, sports, your dog running around a dog park, kids uh, do it on sports day, and you're using a camera like this, you're gonna get better results if you spend more money on the memory card. So with a faster memory card inside the camera, I was able to take some shots of my daughter, and sure, there were a few misses, but I got this picture, which I'm really happy with. Now, before we get into how the camera handled low light and nighttime photography, let's talk about ISO. ISO is a function of the camera that allows you to make your picture brighter or darker. There's three ways of controlling light, 
aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Increase the ISO, your picture can be brighter. Decrease the ISO, your picture can be darker. But ISO also um, affects image quality. When you push the ISO up and increase the number, your picture quality will start to deteriorate. Your picture might look a bit soft and grainy. This is called digital noise. So I was quite keen to put this to the test and see how the camera handled the high ISOs. So here's the results. Now at our starting point of 100 ISO, this image looks great. Increase the ISO to 200 and we see virtually no change. So let's zoom in to see the detail. At ISO 400 and also 800, we still have a great looking image. But by the time we get to ISO 1600 and 3200, the digital noise is certainly more noticeable. At 6400, the image would certainly be usable, but by the time we get to 12,800 and certainly 25,600, it's clear to see we've gone a step too far. The image now looks very noisy and lacks sharpness. Now, digital noise affects every camera, but to be honest, at different levels, it really comes down to what type of camera you have. Of course, if you spend more on your camera and you have a better camera, then there's a good chance you can push the ISO much higher before you start seeing uh, the digital noise, that grainy look in your images. So with an entry level camera like the D3500, I wasn't expecting to be able to push the ISO too high, but I have to say once again, the camera impressed me. So a good rule of thumb when changing your ISO is this, ISO keep it low. The lower the ISO, the cleaner your photo will look. How to change ISO on the D3500? Well, it's pretty easy. You wake the camera up, you press the I button on the back of the camera, you navigate over to where it says ISO, press OK, select the ISO you want and press the OK button and it's done. Now I mentioned earlier in the video that there are some things missing from the D3500 and this is one of them. On the side of the Nikon D3400 there's a function button. Now this is missing on the new camera. The function button when you hold it down and turn the wheel on the back of the camera allows you to change the ISO straight away. So it's a much easier way of changing the ISO. Changing the ISO on the D3500 to be honest, it's not hard, but I really loved this shortcut on the D3400. And sadly, it's been removed from the D3500. I'm not quite sure why you did this Nikon. It's a shame. It's not a deal breaker, but it's a missing feature. So let's talk low light photography. Now to test how the camera performs in low light, I got up really early to capture a sunrise. Everybody loves a sunrise. Uh, I went down to the local harbor to take some photos of the boats and I got the camera on a tripod, which is obviously essential when you're shooting in low light. But generally when I'm doing landscape photography, low light nighttime photography, the camera is on a tripod. Now the resulting image was okay to be honest, but I wasn't really capturing the colours, particularly the nice warm orangey glow that I was actually seeing with my own eyes. It just wasn't there. But when I got back and flung the JPEG image into Lightroom, a quick two minute edit and there it was. So finally, let's talk about night photography. So I've had a really busy week of photography courses and workshops here in Brisbane. And on this day, it was the end of the day, my students were practicing their low light nighttime photography, taking some great photos of the Brisbane city. Um, so I had the Nikon D3500 with me, so I put it on a tripod and I selected a really slow shutter speed, 30 seconds. Now the reason for the long exposure was I wanted to get some nice blur on the surface of the Brisbane River. Now when taking long exposures, it is really important that the camera doesn't move. So not a problem, I would usually pull this Nikon remote out of my bag and use this to activate the camera. That way there's no camera shake to worry about. Now this works just fine with the Nikon D3400, but here's the other feature that's missing in the new camera. With the Nikon D3500, sadly, no remote option anymore. They've removed this. Now this is a shame. Now it is a shame that the remote option is no more, but you can still work around it. On the Nikon D3500, all you need to do is press the release mode button on the back of the camera and select the self timer. This means that when you press the shutter button, the camera will count down. You can usually set, uh, select either two, five or 10 seconds, and that helps to eliminate any shake. 
An alternative to using the self timer is to connect my camera to my phone using Bluetooth. Nikon have a free app for this. It's called SnapBridge. Um, it's an option that allows you to not only remotely control the camera using your smartphone or tablet, but also you can take photos on your camera and have them directly downloaded to your device. Supposed to be a pretty cool feature. Didn't get a chance to try this one out though. Might get back to you on that one. So let's now take a look at my nighttime photo of Brisbane taken with the Nikon D3500. Now let's begin by looking at the original JPEG. This image here is right out of the camera. It's a JPEG image, no editing has been done. And I think this image looks pretty awesome. Now a little bit of editing in Lightroom to straighten horizons and the buildings and a little bit of adjustment to the levels. And here is the finished image. Once again, very impressed. Well done Nikon. So here's my final thoughts on the new Nikon D3500. Now this is a very capable camera. It's compact, it's lightweight, making it great for a travel camera. It may even give some of the mirrorless cameras a run for their money. Now whilst it might be a small compact camera, it really does pack a punch in terms of image quality. Um, considering it's an entry level camera, I was really quite impressed with what I've seen so far. Remembering of course that we've only been able to see the JPEGs out of the camera so far. The RAW files I haven't been able to see yet because of the updates from Lightroom and Photoshop. They're not yet ready. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this camera is capable of in the future. Now there are two things that are missing from this camera. We talked about them in the video. Uh, the function button allowing me to change the ISO quickly is gone. And also I can't use the Nikon remote with this camera. Those two things were available in the camera before, the D3400, but not in this camera. So a bit of a shame Nikon, but there you go. If this is your first DSLR camera, of course, it's not gonna be a problem. There are ways around those missing functions. Now, another thing I'm not a fan of is the button on the side of the lens. This is the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. So if you're buying this camera, there's a good chance you'll get this lens in the package. It, to be honest, it's a pretty good lens, but it has this fiddly button that you have to press. So before you use the camera, you have to push the button in and extend the lens. Now, one of the nice features about this design is it makes the lens really compact when you're putting the camera away in your bag, but the button is a bit fiddly and I don't like it. To be honest, on the previous camera, that lens featured the same button and it actually has worn out and stopped working altogether. So that's another thing that's a bit frustrating about it. But again, that's not about the camera, that's about the lens. Now I have only used the kit lens for this review for a reason. If you buy this camera, there's a good chance that you're gonna get the same lens. So I wanted this review to be honest and represent what you will be able to do with this camera. Of course, in the future, I'll be trying some other lenses out and I'll be updating the webpage with some of those images. So all up, the new Nikon Dad, D... Dad, you promised me $5. I expect change. So all up, the new Nikon D3500 is a really great beginner's DSLR camera. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing to my channel, and don't forget, you can leave your questions, comments, and suggestions down below. I hope to see you again soon. See ya.